that's when things kind of took a turn and not in a good way. And that's when the printer really was like, home girl, mm -mm. no, we're not going to keep this up. Hello everyone. Today, I wanted to show you some ways that I use my patterns, how I work with my patterns, how I began saving my patterns and kind of the evolution of my pattern obsession through the years. Because if you are a person that prints out your patterns, it can get to be a little bit overwhelming. And if you are as big of a pattern buyer as I was back before 2024 and I made an intention that I wasn't gonna do as much of that, I've only bought one so far. You know, progress though, I'm making progress. But I was gonna show you ways that you can use your patterns, maybe some things to help you with your patterns, or if you're a digital person, I'm gonna show you what I use, or if you're not a digital person at all, completely fine. I'm just gonna show a couple of ways of how I use my stuff because I personally like to be a little bit nosy into people's lives and see how they do stuff and see how they organize things because I'm a little bit of an organization addict. I am on medication. I would like to say that because there is stuff out there for people like me because I can wear on a person's nerves. My husband agrees. So we're not talking about an elephant in the room that I don't know is here. I know it's here. I sometimes will find myself arranging books in height or color or type. It's odd, but it's the the urge is strong. When I began my crochet journey, it was COVID-ish time. I think it was that spring or summer of COVID in 2021. The thing that got me interested in wanting to crochet was the pocket shawl that was going around. I don't know if y'all remember it. It was everywhere. I kept seeing that thing and I was like, oh, my mom probably needs that because I, I wouldn't wear that because I don't know how to wear things like that. But I thought my mother would probably enjoy something like that. So I got the pattern and I was just learning and I couldn't do it at all. So I found an easier one and that's when I began printing patterns. I started printing a lot of different patterns. Some were free, some were paid, but my printer started not liking that because I'm extra and I liked color pictures. I don't want to just be plain Jane and be black and white. I like color. My printer said no. We're not gonna keep up that stuff. These things take up a whole lot of ink and that stuff is expensive and I didn't wanna keep buying it because y'all, I'm cheap. I have I think I've mentioned this. I will splurge on some things where I think quality needs to happen, but on other stuff, I'm like, mm -mm, we are not doing that. That is too much. Paper and all that, I was just going through too much and I don't have space for all those patterns because there's a bunch and I had to find a better way. Example A, this is the home goods, hats, the pocket shawl, cat butt coasters, because yeah, I have those. That is all in here. This doesn't look bad, does it? No, no, this isn't bad. But then I discovered amigurumi. That's when things kind of took a turn and not in a good way. And that's when the printer really was like, home girl, mm -mm. no, we're not gonna keep this up. This is the size of a small child. It's about 15 pounds of patterns. And these are all amigurumi things in this one. They're ranging from gnomes, Snoopy, Woodstock, nativities. I really don't know what all's in here. Every time I look through it, I'm like, really? I did not know I had that. And that is part of the reason why I decided to go digital. I did not like having all this paper and I don't have room to store all of this stuff. I just don't. I love to organize and things, but this, no, this is just too much. I don't think binders are pretty. I don't think boxes that hold all those papers are pretty and I like pretty things. And this was messing with my feng shui and we don't need to be messing with my feng shui, no. I am a very visual person and I need to kind of see everything and when it's in a binder like this, I couldn't see everything. And I didn't always like that. But for those of you who do do paper, wonderful. If that's where you're most comfortable, do that. Nothing wrong with that. I keep mine in these plastic page protectors and then I would use one of my kids, 
water soluble markers and I could make notes or mark where I was in my pattern and I could come back and know where I was. Just an idea in case you don't always wanna write on your patterns and keep them safe. It doesn't matter either way. Do what's comfy for you. Another thing I was gonna show you that you can do with your paper patterns is there is a little thing like this and this is magnetic. You can put your paper patterns on here and these are little magnetic bars and you can fold it like this and you can move the bar to wherever you are working in your pattern so you don't lose your place or you can use one of the smaller bars to mark something, whatever way you wanna use it. This. I bet would hold two to three pieces of paper. I doubt it would hold much more than that. Everybody's setup is different and you have to find what works best for you. Where I sit, this sort of thing would be really nice. If you were a paper patterned person, paper patterned person, pa pa pa, and you have a space beside you to set your patterns upright, this might be perfect for you if you didn't know these already exist. I think a lot of people already know about these, but just in case you didn't, there's stuff like this out there. And I know most of the yarn companies have their own version of this. I've seen one on Hobie. I think I saw one with Premier maybe? I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But a lot of yarn companies have something similar. I just thought this was a cute little idea. Another thing you could do is if you have a cookie sheet, a small cookie sheet, that's another good thing that you can set up, lean it on a lamp or something on a table by you and use magnets like kids magnets against the pan and your pattern and you're set to go and you already have that at home. That's another idea for you. Because I couldn't keep printing off patterns, I ended up buying myself an iPad mini and this is mine. My little case, it also has space for an Apple pencil and my case can fold up and you can just fold this and it sits just like this. And like I said, my furniture allows me to have this sitting right beside me and my patterns are right here. And because I now need bifocals, I can increase the size of my pattern so that I can see it better. I started doing some research and I found an app called Notes Writer Pro. And that is the paid version. There is a free version. The paid version, you just get a little bit more bells and whistles. And I think at the time that I bought it, it was $4.99. I'm assuming the price is similar to that, maybe just a little bit more. I don't know. With Notes Writer Pro, I can download my patterns from Etsy or Ravelry, wherever I've gotten them. I save them either into my cloud or into the Files app on my devices. And this is speaking only for Apple products. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about Android things, but I'm assuming there's something similar with Android where you have a cloud or a Google Drive. I put things into my files app on my phone or my iPad. They are the same thing because I'm the same person. So those accounts are linked. So whatever I have in the files app on my phone is also on my iPad. I then transfer those and save it to Notes Writer Pro. When you are in Notes Writer Pro, one of the features is you can write on your pattern. So I can use my Apple Pencil and I can write my hook, my yarn, whatever I want to, and it'll save onto my pattern for the next time I come back to it. And I really like that part because my pencil is always here and if it's connected to my iPad, it's always charged. And it's not like I'm doing a lot of writing, but it does make it very convenient that I can do that. Now, please know, I am not saying you need to go digital. I'm just showing you what I do. If you are a paper pattern person, that is wonderful and that is just fine. I'm just showing you what I do in my little world. You do what is most comfortable to you. Now, another thing that I sometimes do because y'all know I have a lot of pattern books. I'm not sure if y'all have realized that. Last time I did a really big pattern book video, I showed you 10 and I said that I had over 50. Oh boy, that number has grown a lot. I don't know how many more than that I have now. I don't wanna count. I don't wanna know. I love holding the books. I love looking at the books, but I really hate working from a book. And it's mostly because of where I sit in my living room. It is just hard to have all of that around me. So what I will do is either with my iPhone or my iPad in my Notes Writer Pro app or even on the Notes app in your phone or your, your iPad if that's what you use, 
there is a scan document feature and I will scan the document and it turns it into a PDF and I can then use it the exact same way as I was using a downloaded PDF from Ravelry or Etsy. I can mark on it, I can do everything exactly the same, but it's just a photo of that book in my iPad so I can just work it a little bit easier. I love being able to do that. Now, if you do that, please remember that those are still licensed things and you are not allowed to share those images or anything, that's, that's a no-no. As a teacher, I'm gonna use my teacher voice, that's a no, don't do that. You're breaking rules, we don't break rules. Be respectful of your book and the patterns and don't share those things. That other person that you're wanting to give things to, they need to buy it the same way you did because that's just not right. The designers deserve their cut of that. I was just gonna give that as an idea for those of you who maybe did not think of scanning your books with your iPhone or iPad. I don't know about Kindles or any Android stuff. I'm so sorry, I can't help with that. It's made it very nice and easy for me when I am working at my command post because I love my command post and I like it to be not super messy and it really is messy most of the time, but the less books I have around me, because I usually have several things going at the same time, the better. That's just easier for me and I just don't like a lot of stuff because I'm anal. I don't know if y'all have figured that out. Um, extra and anal, both. That's weird. But I hope that has been somewhat helpful and you've gotten a little sneak peek into my, my little stash because I got kind of a stash. When I was getting ready for this video, I saw that, I think it is in my cloud, I had 191 patterns. Oh my. And then the ones that are actually already on my iPad, that is 97. That's a lot. That's not including my books. How do y'all keep your patterns? Do you do the paper route? Do you do the digital route? Are there more paper people or are there more digital people? I'm curious to know. Feel free if you have questions or comments, be sure and drop me a line down below. I can't help you a whole lot with the technology side of things because I'm not super duper techie at all. I just know enough to get by. So don't think I can help you technology wise because I can't. I'm just telling you what I use and I hope that's been somewhat helpful. Thank y'all so much for being here today and I look forward to seeing you next time here on the Rumi Mill. Bye!